Kavanaugh with HIVHero.org and HeroNews.org. And I'm here with the amazingly talented and beautiful Amos Wolf. How are you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And you know all of my friends because you were in Chicago. Yes. What was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing. It was. Um, I was in Follies earlier that year, that season actually, and went straight into Chicago, which was a whirlwind. Um, but, you know, dancing Fosse material eight shows a week is a dream come true and that cast and that company is such a community and such a family that it was really a special two years that I spent there almost two years so tell me where you're from I grew up in Nyack New York which is about 45 minutes upstate I heard that your parents were very creative tell me about that is that the natural transition that you became this amazing performer? Yeah, I don't think I really had a choice in the matter. Um, my mother is a choreographer, a modern dance choreographer, and uh, my father is a writer and a poet, and my younger brother is a bass guitarist, so there was never a, a nine to five in my future. Um, I grew up with a costume trunk pulling out dresses primarily, and uh, running around singing West Side Story, so it was, it was a, a shoe-in that I would end up doing what I do for a living now. Well, that's kind of fun, but you obviously had to have this talent for dancing and singing, so how did they make that happen for you? And uh, obviously you made it to the epitome of your craft but by being on Broadway. I mean, they must have been very supportive. Was your mom a dance mom? I just have to know. No. You know, she wasn't. My dad actually ended up being more of the he jokes that he's my agent, even though I do have a <laughs> representation that's actually in the business. But my father, um, when he when we when I was looking at colleges, I went to school for musical theater, and he took me to one of my auditions. And he had always been like sort of into it and supportive, but something about like the competitiveness of seeing all of these, you know, kids, seventeen year olds sitting there like hoping to do well. My dad like rose to the occasion. The baseball player and him was like. Yeah, did you, did you do it? Did you get it? Like that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And ever since, he's been a, a total convert. Oh, that's awesome. So tell me, you know, it's so competitive here in New York. What advice do you have for people that want to achieve your dream and make it on Broadway? Yeah, I mean, I think what you said is just like a huge aspect of the business. It's um, like I said, Chicago was a family and the Broadway community is a family and they really do take care of their own but it's a really tough lifestyle it's um you know I don't I think a lot of people think of like the, the glamorous time performing which is fantastic but there's also the not so glamorous time auditioning or trying to get into an audition or trying to pay rent or trying to figure out what life is when you're not working and the you know the likelihood is that you're gonna have downtime even uh, even if you're very successful this past year, I did a lot of short gigs, like a lot of short runs and had a lot of downtime. And so I had to figure out what I was going to do outside of doing theater. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's, that's my advice, I guess, is that if you love to perform, definitely cultivate that and definitely figure out a way to be involved in this industry but the lifestyle of an actor is for a very specific person. I mean, they call them gypsies for a reason, right? It, you, do, you, don't, you don't always have the luxury of having a home base and you don't always have the uh, luxury, <coughs> excuse me, of um, steady employment. And you know, I think it does take a very specific kind of parent that supports their child to follow their dreams, not knowing what the outcome will be. Well, I think that's one of the reasons I find the gypsies the bravest people I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, they're some of my favorite people, too. I, I think uh, that passion and that drive carries into so many different aspects of life beyond just dancing on the stage or performing on a stage. Um, and I think that's a really valiant decision that you make, and a lot of people make at a really young age to devote their life to something that is has so many variables. Let's talk about Gigi. I haven't seen it. I've never seen it, so I'm so excited to see you in it. Yeah. Uh, you're friends with the lead. Tell me about her. <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens is playing Gigi, um, and she's amazing. She's she's so great in the show. Um, 
you know, I didn't, I've never seen High School Musical. Um, and so I didn't know, I guess, she, you know, she's she was a big deal. She, yeah. She's a big deal. And she's done a lot of other great work, but that is certainly what she is known most for, I'd say. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. And she is so grounded and down to earth um, and immensely talented. And for her first time, what, what, what has amazed me actually is, you know, TV and film is very different from theater in that you have a take. You have a couple takes and you do you give your all for those takes and then you can let it go. And in theater, we do the same show. It shows a week and finding a level of consistency is something that's really challenging. And Vanessa has never done an eight show week. And we just spent um, four weeks in performance in D.C. doing an out of town tryout. And she never missed. She never marked. I mean, it, like she was she was so, so consistent. And she's up there with Victoria Clark and Dee Hody and Howard McGillen and Corey Cott, like, you know, some Broadway royalty. Um, and she, she held her own. And she has that it thing. You know, I that cue or whatever, that undefinable thing that just, it's infectious. And it's so wonderful for a part like Gigi, which is this woman who, this girl who becomes a woman and sort of chooses her own destiny. Well, I think everyone should go see Gigi. It is opening. Our previews are coming when? Previews are the middle of March. My producer's going to kill me, but we open officially April 8th. April 8th. Go get tickets to see Gigi because he's fabulous, and it's going to be an amazing thing, and it's great to see so many uh, new productions coming up, American in Paris, and now Gigi, two European kind of themed uh, musicals coming up, so it's, it's really kind of great. So get your tickets now. Go see Gigi. I get very ritualistic about shows when I'm in them. If I have, like even off stage, if I have a moment where I always high five someone at a certain part of the show, um, it needs to happen every night. My friend Max, who's in Gigi with me, um, I fix his tie before each night before the curtain comes up. Even if the tie's fine, I have to like touch it and adjust it on him. So I love those kind of traditions. That's kind of fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, maybe a little certifiable. Like maybe maybe it's a little bit superstition as well, but. Um, no, it, I think I think that's I think that I think the people is what makes people want to do this. And um, I mean, even in high school, I feel like that 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 for me, that community of the weird theater people in high school was where I got to blossom and be myself. And um, theater was certainly my first love and my first home. You know, like I as a gay man and like a pretty obvious gay kid. I didn't have a ton of friends or I didn't feel like a great community in elementary school and high school until I found theater. And then I sort of discovered that there was this other world in which what made me bizarre to the muggles, if you will, like the normal people, is what uh, made me really special. I love a Harry Potter um, <laughs> <laughs> reference. That's really funny. <laughs> So Amos, what is quirky about you? You're kind of perfect. So what is quirky about you? I mean, I think the question is what is not quirky about me? Um, I'm trying to think. I, 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 um, I'm very neat. And that's not like an OCD, like things have to be in a certain place or I knock on a wall three times or, you know. Um, but I'm... Uh, fastidious in how like I keep my home and need uh, you know what it is it's the um, the stove top has to be clean like I need the stove top uh, the rest of the apartment could be in shambles but if the stove top is clean I'm a much more zen sane person Amos tell me a secret few people know about you so when I was a little boy I used to put um, pajama pants on my head and tie berets around them and pretend it was long hair, and I called it my funny hat. Um, yeah, so there's something that not a lot of people know about me. Um, and I used to run around the house uh, singing the Queen of the Nights aria from The Magic Flute. So, Amos, as you know, we're a site for newly diagnosed and people living with HIV. Do you have a message out there about the importance of being protected and getting tested for young people like yourselves? 
totally. Um, I mean, I get tested every six months, regardless of my how sexually active I've been or not. Um, I love your slogan, condoms are hot, um, and I always use protection. Um, I, I just don't think there's really another option in, in this day and age. I think um, out of respect for yourself and out of respect for your partner, um, wrap it up. It's really like not that deep and not that uh, difficult to do. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's a part of having sex in the 21st century. And I, and I think it's not just a gay thing. I think it's um, whoever you are, whoever you're having sex with, uh, it's a really beautiful thing you're sharing with someone else. And uh, if it's something that's sacred, then be as safe as you possibly can. I agree with that. And, you know, all this stuff with PrEP that's coming out, it's really an amazing thing. You could be on PrEP, but that does not stop you from getting any kind of other disease. Uh, so please, it's not 100%. I want you all to be safe. If you're in a relationship, get tested together and be just be happy and just let's play it the smart way, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you have this one life to live. So um, why not stack the deck the best way that you can? So Amos Wolf, that's such a hot name, <laughs> Amos Wolf. <laughs> I just want to say that you're so handsome and so talented, and I'm so happy that you're our Broadway hero for February, which is the February month of love, and it, it's freezing. So cuddle up with someone that you love, wrap it up, and have a great February. But go see Gigi. And I think your career is going to go up and up and you're going to get that lead that someone creates for you because you're such an amazing guy. So thank you so much for being here and being our Broadway Hero of the Month for February. Hey, it's such an honor. Thank you for having me. And condoms are hot. Hey, my name is Amos Wolf. It's an honor to be Broadway Hero for the month of February. Come see me in Gigi this spring, opening April 8th at the Neil Simon. And condoms are hot.